On this edition of Lexington Now, school violence prevention, February at Carnegie, and the Friends of the Bookseller. I'm Neil Noah and welcome to Lexington Now for the week of February 13th, 2023. Mayor Linda Gorton, along with one Lexington's Divine Karama, made a big announcement aimed at curbing youth violence in our schools. Here's more. Today we're announcing violence prevention grants to 16 of our schools. The grants are being given to the school's Family Resource and Youth Services Centers. Family support programs are offered through the centers to help children who are encountering barriers to educational success. The centers provide support in basic needs, school attendance, social skills, and crisis response. We want all of our children to have the opportunity to succeed in school. <clears throat> Children who live in a home experiencing trauma related to violence need extra support. One Lexington is making progress in preventing violence among young people, among youth and young adults. We have greatly expanded our efforts, including the grants we are talking about today. We're getting results between 2021 and 2022, we saw a 50% decrease in gun-related homicides among youth and young adults, and a 15% decrease in shootings. My background is grassroots. Um, all I wanted to do was help young people. And my first connection um, 10 years ago, um, 2013 is when I really got started, was partnering with Fayette County Public Schools. And in those partnerships, um, the people that I worked with, whether it was mentoring, whether it was our youth coat drive, it was always the Friskies. Um, we hear a lot about our, our teachers, um, as we should, um, but I think there's so many untold stories um, about what our Friskies do each and every day, plugging in those gaps. Um, helping our young people. And so that was always uh, my first introduction to the school system. Um, so I know firsthand um, the impact that they have on our families and our students. Um, so when I got this job, um, obviously me understanding um, it's going to take all of us to see the reduction in the gains that we want to see when it comes to gun violence, especially among youth. And so my first thought um, was how can we partner with the school system? Um, these are two of the biggest entities in Lexington, city government and um, the school district. Uh, we got to partner more. We got to work together more in order to see gun violence reduce amongst our young people. And so um, this grant opportunity is just the beginning of that partnership. Um, we looked at the data and the way we identified the schools is we looked at the schools that were in areas that were most impacted by gun violence. And that's how we chose the schools that we chose. Um, the idea behind this funding is um, intentional funding for them to focus on services for youth directly impacted by gun violence, but then also to create partnership opportunities. Um, just the other night, I had three schools that hit me up and said, you know, we got our grant and we're going to partner together for a Stop the Violence rally in June. And it's that type of partnership, it's that type of rallying of the community that we hope to inspire through this, this grant opportunity. On behalf of all the family and youth service center coordinators who received this donation, we want to say thank you, Mayor Linda Gordon and One Lexington, for this opportunity to increase services and unique interventions to youth most impacted by the trauma of violence. With this donation, the FRIST will be able to continue and or expand services for each community's needs. Specifically at Henry Clay High School, I'll be collaborating with Urban Impact at the Woodhill Community Center and other high school FRISTs to host, host youth summits to educate, empower, and listen to the students' concerns and perspectives in our communities. 
Before I end, I would like to recognize all the family and youth and service coordinators in appreciation of Frisk Week. What better way to represent the hard work of Frisk by receiving this donation? Again, I want to say thank you to Mayor Linda Gordon and One Lexington. It really does take a village. This donation represents more than just money. It represents the support our youth to the support our youth need within our community, within their schools, and wherever they can be reached. Thank you. Lexington's Carnegie Center has been a resource for literacy and learning for many years. Erica Cook shares with us what they've got going on in the month of February. My name is Erica Cook and I'm the Marketing and Communications Director at the Carnegie Center. We want to share with you all of the amazing upcoming programs and events that we have to host for the community. Uh, so we have quite a few events coming up in February. Uh, we have uh, our first one is actually next Tuesday, February 7th at 630. It's called the Kentucky Great Writer Series. And this is a quarterly series that we've been hosting for over a decade. Um, and this upcoming show is going to feature authors such as uh, Kiki Petrosino, Michael Patrick Smith and Charles Booker. And they're each going to be reading segments from their memoirs and then having a Q&A and a book signing to follow. So we're really excited. We've seen a lot of interest on Facebook for this event. So we're hoping that everyone's going to be able to come out in person. But the great news is that it's also going to be live streamed on Facebook and it'll be available as a recording at a later date. It used to be called something else, um, books by Kentucky authors. And um, then we sort of shifted up, shifted the name up a little bit around 2012. Um, but it's been an ongoing series for one of our longest standing ones at the Carnegie Center. Every time um, a Kentucky writer has a new book that's coming out um, that plans to be published, uh, we like to nominate, the, well, the public can nominate, um, but the staff can also nominate. And so they come here and they do sort of a promotion of their book, but it's also a great opportunity for the writers to get to know their fans. Um, um, and to talk to them on a more personal one-on-one -on -one level. And even authors who aren't uh, born in Kentucky are still eligible to be a part of the program as long as they live or have lived in Kentucky. The cost is completely free. It's free and open to the public and all are invited. The next event we have here is uh, February 16th at 6 p.m. It's called Burn the Mic and it's a we have a really great following. It's a Kentucky Black Writers collaborative initiative um, and it happens once a month and we have a pretty great following of folks who like to come out and share their spoken word, um, their poetry or whatever else they feel like saying on the mic. Uh, so that is uh, happening February 16th at 7 p.m. And um, in partnership with WUKY, we're really excited to announce um, our second uh, installation of the Say It Loud series. The Kentucky Black Writers Collaborative has partnered with WUKY, that's 91.3, um, for this series called Black and Proud. And this one coming up on February 26th at Louis Gart Studios is going to feature Lexington Writers Room members and KBWC members, Claudia Love Meyer, Venetia Proctor, Eugenia Johnson Smith, and Lisa Brown. And that's gonna be also recorded and aired at a later date for folks who aren't able to make it in person. Uh, so we're really excited about that, um, especially with it being the month of February for Celebrate Black History Month. We also have a contest that's open right now for uh, youth ages 13 to 19. It's called Young Black Voices. And this contest invites um, young black artists and writers to submit either writing or art uh, based on the prompt of what black joy means to you. And so this contest allows them the opportunity to express themselves, you know, given Carnegie Center's mission of empowering people to explore and express their voices. We thought this would be a wonderful opportunity to invite kids to submit work for this contest and then also have a chance at being published. So um, our winning uh, contestants will have their work in their art published published in a chat book and it'll be available online and they also win prizes. So the first prize gets to win $100, a Kindle, um, some books that are 
age appropriate and also some Carnegie Center swag. So we're really excited to offer three prizes for the winners of this contest and that'll be open for the entire month of February. They can just submit everything they would like to contest at carnegiecenterlex.org. And the best part about this contest is it's not just Lexingtonians. Anyone is invited to apply in the entire country as long as you're a U.S. resident and you're a black student between the ages of 13 and 19. It's amazing. It's, it's an incredible feeling um, here at the Carnegie Center. In the past, I know we have struggled a little with captivating some of our younger audiences um, in terms of the teen population specifically. I think uh, with our kids' classes and our summer camps for middle school students, we've always had, oh, in our tutoring program, I can't forget our award-winning tutoring program, we've always had a great influx of uh, younger students in our building, but we're really wanting to open our doors and create create new, engaging, fun opportunities for teens that really inspire them to express their voices and to get to know each other as you know, folks who are interested in reading and writing um, and sort of become our next generation of writers who might be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, so we really hope that you'll be able to visit the Carnegie Center for Literacy and Learning. We're located downtown on West 2nd Street, 251, and we're open to the public um, Monday through Friday as well as Saturdays. We have have classes, we have events, we have programs for people of all ages who are interested in learning. Uh, maybe you want to be a writer, maybe you want to hone your skill set in poetry or nonfiction, or perhaps you're just interested in learning Spanish or Italian. We offer foreign languages, we have a tutoring uh, program for kids um, ages K through 12, um, as well as a bunch of other amazing engaging programs that are um, low cost or free to the public. So we hope that you can make it down here um, and please follow us on social media or visit our website at carnegiecenterlex.org. After this short break, we'll take you to the Friends Bookseller. Have two ways out. When fire strikes, deadly smoke can fill your home within minutes. That's why the USFA wants you to plan and practice home fire drills. Draw a map of each level of your home showing all doors and windows. Discuss the map with everyone who lives with you. Practice your home fire drill at least twice a year. Make sure all doors and windows that lead outside open easily. Push the smoke alarm button to start the drill. Try feeling your way in the dark or with your eyes closed. Have at least two ways out of every room. If your first way out is blocked by fire or smoke, you can use your second way out. If there is smoke, get low and go. Crawl quickly under the smoke to your nearest exit. Close doors behind you and gather at a pre-planned outside meeting place where first responders can see you. Call 911. Remember, get out and stay out. Never go back inside for people, pets, or things. Welcome back to Lexington Now. One of the public library's most popular features is the Friends Bookseller. But for those who don't know, what is it? Rod Brotherton fills us in. My name is Rod Brotherton and I am the current president of the Friends of the Library Bookstore. It's the used bookstore for the Lexington Public Library System. And not only do we get books from the library and DVDs and CDs, people donate books to us on a weekly basis and it's not unusual for us to get a thousand books, CDs, DVDs that we categorize and then resell to the public. And it's amazing some of the stuff we get here. It really is just like a regular library. We've got everything that they do as well, but you can come take it home with you and keep it here. The, the cellar was started in 1969, actually. It was incorporated as a 501c3. And so we predate the current library building, which was built in 1989. And we did move in here into the basement uh, in 1989. And have been here, we've celebrated our 50th year in 2018 and look forward to the next 50. We rely on a lot of volunteer help, and a lot of retired people. So we really think that uh, there's a real opportunity to kind of get involved uh, with the community. Students come down and, and help out, and retiree people come and help out, and just regular folks that are, we just want to take a day or two away from the things that they're doing normally come down. I'm Simon Bose. I'm the assistant manager here at Friends Bookseller and I am the volunteer liaison for a lot of our volunteers here. They're really the backbone of our entire operation. We have high schoolers that are able to donate a few hours of their Saturdays 
all the way to retired folks who have come in every week for, for years and years. So it really means a lot when people want to come donate their time, especially be around books. It's a long process from donations all the way to getting it out the door again. Uh, I'd say we process up to maybe 10,000 every month. Uh, that all starts in the back sorting room where the volunteers are, uh, goes through a lot of processes up to get to the front. The most surprising thing that has come through here would probably be a first edition signed Gone with the Wind. Uh, it has it was listed on our online sales and it was out in just a few days. So uh, our online sales, which Dan will talk about soon, uh, are a great resource for the community as well. My name is Daniel Mobley and I work in the sorting room at Friends Bookseller as well as the online sales department at Friends. We're having donations that come in regularly that we can easily put in online sales, meaning that they're going to be m like books that are more valuable than the books that we'll put for bargain prices out on the floor. You can find us on our Amazon store, our eBay shop, and also at Discogs. But it'd probably be easiest to find our Amazon store. And in order to find that, you would have to simply Google Lexington Friends Amazon and then click on the first result on the page. My name is Jojo Yan. I'm the store manager of the Friends Bookseller. We try to provide the very affordable discount price books to the community and also find a good home for the books as well. So it is important to um, provide the good service in here. And since people love the facility in this building, the central library, and um, whenever they come to use the facility and they come down to see us. So it's, it's a great thing and it's, it's a nice thing that we have the uh, facility here to share. I enjoy staying at the front desk when I cash out uh, the customers. Um, I learn what they like to read, you know, all their favorite subjects. So when we have uh, the similar subjects or the books they might like, we put them on the side, keep their name on it. So next time when they come in, then, you know, we will check with them. You know, or if they are a friends member, we have their email address, we send them an email, we reach out to them. Friends of the Library is in the basement of the downtown Main Street Library. You can come in the front door or the side door. If you come in the front door, the pendulum is right there, just bear to your right and go down the stairs. Nine one one is a lifeline for those in dangerous situations, but there's a right and a wrong way to use the service. Nine one one is for emergencies, life and death emergencies, destruction of property, anything that is happening right now, and that is a danger uh, to the citizen or other uh, citizens in the area. Um, Nine one one is. I mean, th that's the number to call. So we have an administrative number, 859-258-3600 for non-emergencies, uh, things such as uh, theft reports, um, burglary reports, um, anything that does not require a light and siren response. If you call 911 and your call's not answered immediately, stay on the line. Do not hang up. The next available operator is going to get to you just as quickly as they can. If you hang up, then you go to the back of the call queue. And so every call that's come in since you have attempted yours will be answered prior to you. So it's extremely important to stay on the line. Yes, we are here and we are ready to answer and to facilitate a call for a service for Lexington. Um, sometimes the call volume um, is high and um, there are circumstances when there is uh, a wreck or something of that nature, something uh, that's a big event that someone witnesses or that it is affecting a lot of people, the call volume just shoots through the roof. And um, everybody today, they want to be the first to call. And so, you know, if we had 10 operators answering the phone and we're getting 20 calls, well, at that particular time, then there's 10 calls uh, that are going to take a longer uh, time to answer. But we're here and we're ready and um, just stay on the line for us. We have uh, call times uh, and call counts hour per hour. We average about 5,000 calls a day. 
And, and, and that can go up or down depending on um, what's actually going on in the city. Last year, for example, we had 219,000 911 calls uh, alone um, that were facilitated. And that doesn't include the uh, non-emergency um, line. We uh, try to answer the call as soon as it as soon as it comes in. Um, the call taker is going to ask uh, pertinent questions uh, related to whatever is is going on, and they're going to enter that information into um, our computer aided uh, dispatch system, and then send it over uh, to dispatch either uh, fire, EMS, or police. It's always important to try to look around you, be aware of your surroundings. If you are not from this area or unfamiliar with Lexington, um, do you see a landmark? Do you see an intersection? We can always find any intersection. Uh, do you see a house number? Do you see a business? Um, those types of things can, can quickly be researched and we can facilitate a response to those locations. So when you call 911, if you don't feel comfortable getting off the line, and you would like for the operator to stay on with you, the operator can stay on with you. The primary uh, aspect of that is going to be to make sure that the caller's safe. Uh, our telecommunicators are trained to make sure that that safety is uh, ensured throughout the call. They're going to have the next steps. They're going to let you know what we need to do next. We need to get you to a safe place so that that response is already coming. That call taker's going to stay on the phone with you um, and get as many details uh, and, and give you the instructions that you need um, to try to get you safe. We try to have at least five operators answering calls at one time and that fluctuates um, during um, peak hours and also shifts. Um, right now E911 we are looking for um, great people to come and join our team. Um, staffing is uh, an issue nationwide. Uh, we've recently um, adopted some incentives here in Lexington to try to get our numbers up. Um, but 24-7, there is someone here who can answer the call. Don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Um, don't think about everything that is, is, is going on uh, around you. If you need help, call. Um, fire and EMS police, we are here to facilitate whatever response uh, that's needed. We get a lot of calls, you know, uh, ranging in age uh, from children uh, to the elderly. So uh, the type of call, um, the tempo of the call, it changes, but we are prepared and trained to, to answer uh, the questions and facilitate the need. If you have an emergency, call 911. We're always there to help. Don't be afraid or nervous. We are here to facilitate any type of emergency need. If you call 911 and your call is not answered immediately, stay on the line. We're going to get to you just as quickly as we possibly can. There's a lot of business at City Hall this week and we're covering quite a bit here and streaming online. And remember, for the most accurate and up-to-date information on all city business, check out our website at LexingtonKY.gov. Here's this week's meeting coverage. That's all for now, but as always, you can keep up with us on social media, check out the latest traffic updates on Twitter at LexRex, or catch our live traffic cams on LexingtonKY.gov. For all of us at LexTV, I'm Neil Noah, and that's it for now.